Tony, welcome to the Hotbox Show, Brew. The last time you did the Hotbox Show was in the Eastern Cape somewhere. The lighting's great. We've got your best side. <laughs> I'm also doing a little bit of Tom Hanks, a little bit of Castaway. I've been in isolation since I got back last Monday, so it's about 10 days now. And how, how, you, how are you feeling? Because of course you and I arrived in Europe on exactly the same day and have been exposed pretty much for exactly the same thing for the first week. Are you feeling okay? I'm feeling okay. I actually, um, I did go for my tests. Uh, I got my results back this morning and I'm negative, so... Feeling pretty good about that, but now I'm like, okay, I know for sure I don't have it, so now I want to isolate myself even even more. So it's not like you don't want to get it now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not like um, I'm feeling okay now. I can um, go out about. Obviously, I want to go see my parents. Um, you know, that was my biggest concern. I think the elderly we really need to respect and uh, protect over this time. Um, you know, most of us who have a fairly strong immune system, you know, even if we get it, we'll probably be okay, but uh, we have to look after our elderly. And that's one of the crazy anomalies that I've picked up on this thing. Apparently no one under nine has died yet, which is the opposite of most pneumonias. <laughs> I never I mean, mostly pneumonia takes like uh, a lot of children every year, a couple of million, and then so far it's only taking the elderly, which is again, something very, very strange. Indeed. So, um, do you, do you, Tony, do you think back to when we were at the United Nations together and that was, it was quite a petri dish of people. There was 180 nations, there was a thousand people and all of us are all over the world again now. It makes you think, doesn't it? It was absolutely, uh, that was what I was most worried about with that experience is obviously not only us leaving but what was coming in. You know, I've never been in a space where, with more different cultures, different uh, interests, different races, all in one place. So it, it was uh, like a recipe for perfect form, but apparently we got through it okay, but my hands have also never been cleaner. Um, I, I must say that the diplomats didn't really get the, the first bump that I was trying. They kept thinking I was coming up to give them one. Um, but, uh, yeah. The, the other crazy thing was, you know, on day one, they're giving the briefing about the virus. And, I mean, it feels like a world of God, even though it was only two weeks ago. You're like, but they were saying, okay, so no handshakes, which obviously diplomats, they look by the handshake. But you've got to bump elbows. And then, like, a, a sentence later, they're saying, if you need to cough, cough into your elbow. <laughs> so I'm going, okay, well, like, now you're going to go snotty elbow with your cough or your sneeze. And bump that against someone else who's now going to cough with. No one knew at that stage, and no one still knows how to handle this thing, what its impact is going to be, uh, you know, where we headed, and, and that's, I suppose, the deep insecurity of it all. But at least here in Africa, that's one thing we do deal with better than most is insecurity. You know, we haven't known where we're going as a country or a continent for quite a while, so we're a little bit more resilient on that. I think you know, the, the countries that have been living in a a lack of security are really getting nailed hard and you know, having their whole lifestyles changed and all of a sudden realizing that you know, it is quite a dangerous world. Well, if you consider how many cases there were three weeks ago as we walked into Vienna and nobody was thinking much about it in Vienna at all and now it's, it's tenfold in Spain. It just goes on and on and on. It just gets exponential and there's no reason to believe it's not going to do that everywhere at the moment. But what if, because we've got such amazing virologists and were you tested on the way into Cape Town with a scanner thing at the airport? Yes, I, I had to stand on the X. Yeah. My body's right. for any temperature. No, and then we, we had the same yeah, thing. Temperature. So yeah. But, I mean, they, they weren't taking it that seriously. There was a bit of a giggle, like, have you been to Italy or Asia? No, haha, <laughs> okay, you're free to go. Um, like, are you feeling okay? Yes, I'm feeling fine. You're free to go. But I think uh, by now, I, I think the penny's dropped for everyone that we've got to take this thing really seriously. Yeah, the guy that, um, there, was, there was only half the flight from, from Amsterdam, and there was no foreign nationals. Uh, it was all South Africans coming home. And uh, when I got to the second thing, the second forehead laser beam thing, I said, good, day, good evening. He said, how are you? And I said, you tell me. <laughs> 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 I 
We were delighted. It was, it, we, we were delighted. It was so proactive because we hadn't been tested on any metal box anywhere. I, m I must say, you know, like after the, the president's speech when it was, I think, Sunday night, and he said, he said please, everyone who's been in a high-risk country, because after I left you, I went down to a little um, town near the Italian border and had one day on the, on the slope, so I just uh, took the opportunity to do that. But, you know, they said anyone who's been in a high-risk area go get tested. And I tried for about six hours on that Monday morning to get through to the, the hotline. Like sometimes getting to number, you are number one in the queue, and then <laughs> nothing, like nada, never got through, must have tried about 30, 40 times. Then when eventually I got hold of my, my well, I don't really have a doctor, as most, most students don't really, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I got hold of a, a doctor who then told me where I can go for a private test. But then they put to you, when I got there, there were 50 or 60 people in a waiting room, all waiting for the corona test. <laughs> More at risk than I felt I was <laughs> sitting here, so I waited outside in the driveway, you know, sitting on the ground for two hours. Um, and then it wasn't a nice experience. They shoved that um, swab so far up your nose, and I thought they were going to poke my eyeball out. And then <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't pleasant, so I don't recommend it unless you really want it. And um, yeah, there was a great uh, interview on Art Defend this week, a guy who had you are a mild form of it, and you just said, look, you know, the best thing we can do is isolate ourselves, and unless you really think that you, you've been exposed, you know, then go for the test, because the testing facilities, if that was a private testing facility that's charging a thousand rand a pop, can you imagine what's happening at the government one? You know, so really leave it for those people who, who really you know, need to know, um, and also other tests that people need for general, you know, other diseases must all be being put on the back burner as well. So this is really, really going to put a huge um, weight on our, our healthcare system, which obviously, you know, is not the best. Well, that, 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 that kind of begs the question. We all know that um, our favourite herb is some form of medicine. The least it can do is balance your immune system. Could you, you know, there's got to be a silver lining somewhere, otherwise we're going to go mad. Even if you think, yes. think of something different to fucking 5G masks. Don't, let's not find out what, who to blame. Let's work on figuring out the, the future of it. Can you, could you see a future of a really expedited industry to crank it up, to fucking feed people? Your, is your soup kitchen still up and running? The soup kitchen is still up and running. We have uh, just o ordered some, uh, we're making some hemp seed oil based uh, sanitizer, obviously, with other actives in there and, and the, the ethanol as well. But um, we organized some gloves for them, and obviously, the hemp seed oil, they're continuing to put that in the, the soup. But obviously, Mama Mickey, she already feeds 250 people just off of donations. And every day now, what's going to happen with the amount of people that are losing their jobs and most of our country lives on no work, no pay. You know, like everyone gets sent home for four weeks, they come out, they've spent their money, they're hungry, and they're no more jobs. And yeah, you're right, there is one industry that I really can believe can offer the opportunity to look us out of that. And this obviously is, is the industrial cannabis and, and medical cannabis industry that is primed. You know, so really, if we, we can start ramping that conversation up and, and changing the narrative towards we need emergency legislation. You know, like, push it through now. Like, just give us a chance to show you what we can do. You know, what we've been telling you all along, that this, this is the green economy. And also tie that in with, with the changes that we're seeing in the planet. If you look at the, the satellite shots of Wuhan and how clear the sky is just a month or two after, you know, since they've been a lockdown, and that the rivers, the, the canals in uh, Venice are flowing clear for the first time in, in living memory. And you know, all of these things that we're seeing on, hold on, we've been living really in a very, very negative way and um, you know, severely polluting ourselves and our planet. And here's a chance to put, like, push the hard reboot. You know, like, it's going to be hard. The shutdown is going to be painful. But when we come out, we've got to be able to choose which software we want to reinstall and what new software we want to install. And I think you know, the green economy that's offered by, by the hemp products, by medical cannabis, and by the industry that we know can help get everyone working again, get everyone into jobs that are sustainable, that are healthy, 
that don't have the, you know, the amounts of, of carbon or the amount of toxins that other industries that, that hopefully we'll leave behind after this have been flooding our systems with. I mean, that, that to me is a ray of hope, and I think we need to be pushing that, that solution even harder than we have up to now. The, the, the hemp seeds that you mentioned at the soup kitchen, are they imported in bags? Yeah, unfortunately, well, that, that's, we bring in the, the oil, so it comes in, in big barrels, and then, uh, yeah, she gives every, because most of Mama Mickey's pay, uh, customers or whatever, if they come for free for food, come from the clinic down the road, so most of them go there for their, whether it's their TB med medication or their HIV medication, and they all say, you have to eat before you can take the medication, but most of them have been sick, so they haven't worked for years. So they come to her for their meal and she puts the hemp seed oil in the soup and they call it the miracle oil. I mean, they get their immune system responds to hemp seed oil like ours would respond to medical cannabis because they're so omega fatty acid deficient. There's no omega fatty acids in the local diet. You know, there's no raw nuts, raw seeds, raw oils. Only oils they're getting are probably you know, multiply, multiple time used uh, frying, frying oil, very little fish. So you put uh, the hemp seeds with that optimum ratio of omega fatty acids into their diet and they see miracles in the way their immune systems then get into your know, operating properly, get, get back into balance. And that will help them fight no matter what they're fighting. Imagine, it, imagine if there was emergency legislation for everyone to just grow as much weed as they could just for seed, just for now. Just get seed to people. Yeah, well, just uh, on, on the food side, as, as you know, you see the shops are running out, people are going to run out of money, but the, the hemp seed, the protein as well, I mean, the globulin Edison is one of the most digestible proteins around, so more bang for your buck if you're eating, you know, your 100 grams of hemp seed protein compared to 100 grams of other you know, meat protein or whatever, you're really going to absorb a lot of that, and without that protein and those omega fatty acids, our immune systems can't fight off the things that are coming and are already here, so... Uh, I think, yeah, this conversation really needs to be escalated. I'm busy with an opinion piece at the moment, put it out there and ready to say, like, guys, let's <coughs> lock this green economy, first of all, because that speaks to, you know, like, we all fearing what this is going to do to the economy. Um, uh, and there's potentially more damage from our collapsed economy than the virus can ever give us. And that we've got to think about is, you know, like, sick people and dying people is one thing, but it can really be escalated when there's mass malnutrition. And um, obviously, everything that goes with people having no money and no food. Uh, yeah, sure. Man is an angry man. Um, and we need to, for the sake of all of us, prevent the solution, uh, present the solution that uh, we believe, obviously, that uh, can take us forward to a much more sustainable, cleaner, healthy lifestyle and economy. Dan, you're listening. What do you think? Could this be a silver lining? Do you reckon the, the weed industry, we could push it through like this? I like I like Tony's uh, words. Uh, emergency legislation, like it really it really makes a good ring to it. Um, and I think if they gave us the chance and let us show them what this plant can do, and yes, I, I do think that the plant has good has got uh, huge. You know, we all know it has got huge benefits to the health and immune and our immune systems. So yes, it could be. It really could be. I mean, they are interested. I mean, if they could just see that what it is doing for people that are sick, then yeah. I mean, maybe, yeah, jo yeah Joe. I know I'm agreeing with absolutely everything, and I think if there's anybody who's level-headed and, and uh, wise and uh, experienced enough to do this and be this whole thing, it's you, Tony. <laughs> what in his spare time, you mean? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. But it's Thank you, Joe. Really and, him, or, and cannabis, I mean, it's like the one basically, right? Um, is the way of forward with rebuilding the country once this current is done, whatever it's going to do. Well, it's it already it's innovating people. People are actually, you know, there's, there's loads of people stepping up to the plate to do stuff. So, um, yeah, we can finally show that this is the way forward. This is our time to shine, guys. This is it, people. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's not, it's something we've been preaching for a long time, but I think. With the push now for looking for solutions, you know, the ears are going to be open and, you know, like, especially at the timing with the cannabis conversation already being there at the forefront, that, you know, like, okay, 
let's give it a, a chance. Like, let's really give it a chance. And then it becomes all of our responsibilities to do it right. You know, like, to actually prove that we haven't been speaking cock and we can work together and we can collaborate and we can build cooperative communities and we can you know, make a sustainable business and actually run proper businesses and be responsible citizens and share and all those good things that, that we've been preaching. Um, that's going to be our challenge as, as the community to, to really look at, okay, hold on, here's the opportunity. We've been given the green light and now can we create the green economy? I've got it. There's a thread there from Chris J. He's listening in. Um, it's, he's talking about stopping an embargo on all of the um, imports, you know, like st release everything from customs, release people's CBD, release. If you want to bring in seed in, just tell them how much, you know, let it let it happen. Let the tra free up the trade, because if your soup kitchen is one and it's for TB patients, fuck's sake, dude, look what it could potentially happen to the TB ward in the next few weeks. I don't know, I, 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 I try and stay level-headed about the whole thing, but we've already been to Europe and seen shit, the pair of us, you know? Well, this is the, the you know, like the, the one thing that uh, we haven't gone prepared for enough is what, you know, is, and it ties in with TB and Corona, is, is respirators. You know, once it gets into your chest, you need a respirator to breathe, and if you can't breathe, you, you know, that's it. And we haven't got respirators. Uh, you, know, you go to the hospitals here, and all the time they have to choose between who gets a chance on the machine. You know, who's the one that's actually got the best chance to survive because they don't have enough respirators. And most, a lot of that is often around you know, TV or lungs. Yeah. It's going to be a very similar situation. And I mean, I know someone who went to Tiger Bird, Tiger Bird Hospital here where they're doing the, the, the tests. And I think they've got eight ICU beds that aren't full at the moment. <laughs> and we probably need about 80,000 if, if it gets to the percentages of our population that, it, that they suspect it may get to. So, I mean, we need to be ordering in or building respirators like crazy or maybe using something that we know is a bit of a bronchodilator that might be able to give some people some relief as well. Some people, exactly. Yeah. So, Tony, I've been asking everybody kind of as a parting shot after all of that. Really? I really thank you for coming on the show and being so positive. You are generally one of those cups ha uh, half full guys. You know, all of my life I've known you as being that kind of guy. So I'm glad to have had this chat because there is a lot of doom and gloom around. But one last question is, what's your favorite conspiracy theory? I would say the martial law control that sooner or later there's going to be a vaccine that gets suddenly developed that we're all going to have to take and all have to drink the Kool-Aid, and if you're not drinking the Kool-Aid, you are a rebel and an outcast, which we used to, but even more, and uh, that it's a way, I mean, already I've met someone on the beach down here, I guess my two meter distance, luckily like we've got a big beach in the world, but uh, she is from uh, Hong Kong, and she said, yeah, all her friends who've gone back to Hong Kong, um, as they arrive, they get fitted with a, ba a bangle or bracelet that tracks everywhere they go. You know, so that that is my that this is some way of getting a new world order of control, more government, uh, more Big Brother, more uh, you know, obey, obey, obey. Um, you know, like uh, it's 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 a it's a so whether it was uh, created or not, the opportunity for those who want more global control and one world uh, one world order, new world order, and all of that. This is the opportunity for them to stick it, to step in and say, right, we all have to listen, we all have to be obedient citizens and yeah. follow the rules. And if you break those rules, you are you know, going away for a long time. Which, again, we, we've had this hanging over us all our lives, but uh, it seems to be next level because probably we, it will be our fellow citizens that are pulling us out if we're not you know, drinking that Kool Aid. Well, I can say. I can see on the thread that somebody's good to grow SA says uh, the vaccine is an implant. So there's there's people in you know I, I ask it in a in a light-hearted way because everything is stranger than fiction now. It's fucking out there what's going on. And we are used to trolling the internet because we're online so much and we've got to go through the shit uh, cutting through the chafe of cannabis, just the headlines of cannabis. So we're very used to actually um 
sifting through the shit to get to what's going on and absolutely everything that I hear is completely plausible at this point. Everything. It's all, it could all be true. It's, it's like we're living in an episode of Black Mirror. It's um, really truth is stranger than fiction right now. Um, the confusion, the fear and all of that, it just again feeds into that agenda that someone can step up and take, take control. So the best thing I can say again is stay positive, try not to be fearful, be prepared, but don't panic. Um, was, you know, really protect your elders, respect your elders, um, you know, and, and keep sharing. You yeah, know, man. Don't let the isolation stop you from being part of your community. Uh, you know, like, let's, let's help it, you know, things like this are amazing. We've got the technology these days that we really can touch base with each other and still, you know, like, keep people from feeling alone when they are isolated. So, yeah, just, uh, thank you guys for constantly putting out, you yeah, positive messages, I mean, even though sometimes you bring the bad news, mostly it's because we are looking for a better way of being and a little better way of living and, and more freedom. So now is the time that we've got to shout even louder. Cool, man. Well, we'll catch you. Uh, we'll, I'll talk to you offline about, you put, you've, you've just given me a, a really good idea. Why not? Let's go, let's go for the emergency legislation. We've got enough lawyers in our court. Maybe we can word something that somebody would listen to because even the president shitting himself at the moment, you know? They, Tito, send it to fucking Tito. Dan, who do we send it to? Uh, probably the, the health minister, because we've got enough to show that it really uh, can help people who are ill and uh, immune boosting of the hemp seeds, all of those kind of things, to put a, together a dossier and say, look, you know, you're not going to have enough medicine to, be, to, to, to heal everyone or to comfort everyone who's going to be facing this and to comfort everyone else who gets pushed out because corona is now the focus you know all these other diseases and every you know like all these other um, illnesses that are now not going to have the focus that corona's got and exactly we have you know a, a solution that uh, we, we can really offer so and then uh, again the it, it might we might have a little chance at it because the eye has been taken off cannabis right now it can we've got an opportunity to slip right in there so um yeah, we, we do need those legal minds to assist uh, with, with that process, with writing the draft uh, regulations and legislation and handing it to them on a platter. So, if you ever can, you step up. Cool. Parting shot. Well done, Tony. We'll check you around. I'll uh, see you on the airwaves. Good luck in the quarantine and have a surf for me, all right, bro? The ocean is definitely the cure for many things like salt water, tears, and uh, sweat. Cool. See you later, man. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Peace. Yeah, I know. It was, um, there was a really weird thing went on in uh, Vienna. I got called by the John Perlman show on Mix Set Y, uh, whatever it is, FM. What's John Perlman on? Can't remember. Power FM. Something. And um, he said, have you got anybody else that uh, would chat? And I, I gave him two names from the UN delegation, one on hemp, one on medicine. And... Tony was in the building, so I gave him Tony, and it, as it turned out, they couldn't connect to me in any way. I saw their call, but they could never hear me, so Tony rode the whole interview for me while I was in the foyer trying to get connected. It was really weird. He is one of the genuine, amazing ambassadors of this plant, guys. He really is.